Can everyone hear me okay? I'm a bit loud anyhow. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Well, I'm Rochelle Krieger, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming out on this beautiful day and being at the talk today. And a big thank you to the Petro Museum um, for this beautiful opportunity and for supporting local artists. Um, I'm very honored to be part of this beautiful exhibit. So I'm going to begin my talk by answering the most commonly asked question, which is, how long did it take you to paint that? <laughs> my reply is consistently, the number of years I've been alive. <laughs> In my talk today, sorry, I'm going to, I have a little technical difficulty here. <laughs> In my talk today, I'm going to try and show you how all past experience and work is a continuous flow that leads up to my most recent work. I will also show how writing has been a large part of my process. One of my first writings about my work is from 1991. It still does a good job of explaining my paintings. I'm going to pause for a second and read it. <laughs> it is visual poetry. It is a spiritual search, a break from what we are told is reality. It is freedom. It is the abandonment of the object, the embracing of space. It is the wonder of a child. It is the translation of nature reflected through the soul. It is energy and movement. It is joy and pain and life. It is spirit. It is. That was written in 1991, and it still kind of holds true. Um, my paintings over the past 30 years have mostly been in series. I'm going to give a very brief rundown of some of my past series so you can see how they're all connected um, to get me to the current Rocks and Ray series. Uh, one of my first series of paintings was the Switzerland series. They also take a lot of photographs. That was one of my photographs. Um, in 1993, I went on a trip to Switzerland with a group of painters in order to paint the landscape. After doing many oil sketches and watercolors on location, I brought the sketches back to my studio and worked them into larger oil paintings. Knowles. 
this is what I wrote in 1997 that explains the nature series of it. Nature is a source of visual, emotional, and spiritual inspiration. Painting abstractly from nature allows me to express not only what I see with my eyes, but with all of my senses. When painting on location, alert, and attuned to my surroundings, the challenge is to effectively use composition, color, form, and light to create an image that reflects pure experience. Most of the paintings in this series has a hidden bird as a tribute to my grandmother. Um, in this painting, you can see on the lower left, there's a small blue bird. And in this painting, on the upper right, there's an orange bird. They're kind of hidden in there. It's kind of like the Percy <coughs> Um The Nature series was my first series that I started exhibiting extensively. This is an installation image of my first solo show. Towards the end of the nature series, I wasn't as interested in formally planted gardens anymore, and I became very drawn to painting in untouched preserved land. Um, I wanted more of a wild, brambly um, landscape after this series, which was more structured. And so this new interest brought me to painting in um, nature preserves all throughout Long Island. Um, in 2002, I was given permission to paint on the private grounds of the Santa's Point Preserve. And I spent several years exclusively working outdoors, and painting um, outside from early April um, until late December. And it became the part, the start of the next series called the New Landscape Series. Many of the works in the new landscape series were painted plain air and completed outdoors entirely. Um, it was quite exhilarating to paint these very large paintings outside. On windy days, I had to tie the paintings down to the easel to keep off and while I'm painting, I'm also writing. Uh, here are some notes that I made along with one of my favorite paintings from this series called inspiration. Uh, that favorite painting is now installed at the Westin Hotel in New Orleans, one of my favorite cities. And I was also very honored to have my work from the New Landscape series at an art exhibit at the Sands Point Preserve. Um, many years after having painted them there in their backyard, I exhibited them there, which was not a big honor. the new landscape series, I started to focus my attention more on the sky through the branches. Um, when this painting was painted, it was very late in the season, with very few leaves on the trees. Um, this piece was exhibited at the first biennial at the Heckscher Museum. And um, this is one of the paintings that led me into my next series. Uh, the next series was called Solid Air Series. At that time, I started to focus my attention more on the sky and weather patterns and started painting down by the water. I left the dense woodsy areas of the preserves and I started to drop away all of the forms of the landscape and I started to focus on the forces we cannot see and trying to um, interpret forces that we can't see, such as wind, air, and breath. And um, again, I did a lot of writing while painting. Um, this is one of the first oil paintings in the Solid Air series. And at this time in the 
series, I changed my direction a bit, and I started to change my materials. Uh, and I went from painting on oil on canvas to using a board to paint on. Uh, using oil paint, oil bars, and <coughs> drawing with graphite. So it really changed my materials a lot. Um, I continued to paint on this type of wood panel for a few years, even into my current series of work. And here's a detailed image of what it looks like on the board. So some, the surface is very smooth and flat, and um, there's a lot of contrast um, between the thick paint, oil paint and texture with graphite drawn in. Uh, this is another detailed image. Um, I also started using some metallic pigments from um, oil bars. And the paintings from that series, the Solid Air series, were exhibited at Susan Ely Fine Art in 2013. And some of the artists I was looking at at the time are um, Arthur Dove and Jane Wilson, who I think is also from Long Island, and I noticed the catalog right there. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, if you ever want to look at amazing paintings of skies, luminous, incredible paintings. So all of that work from all of those past series, and especially the Solid Air series, when I was exploring air and storms and invisible forces, led me to what is now my current series called Rocks and Rays. Um, I started thinking more about outer space, so not just our immediate environment, but the outer layers of our hour of, of space, currents, lightweight rays, and elements that impact us, um, and the Earth, but that are invisible to the naked eye. And again, I have the notes that I'm writing constantly. Um, these are some of the earliest notes and paintings from the Rocks and Rays series in 2012 when I was first starting to form all of my thoughts around the series. At this point in the series, I'm still working on oil and graphite on board with some of those same textures that I showed earlier. And also, still using oil bars as a drawing element to, um, I started to use the oil bars on the bottom instead of the graphite. Um, and I started to incorporate translucent bands of color, so up on the, um, the lighter portions on the top. Um, and I kind of stuck with that theme. You'll see that theme repeated throughout many of the paintings in this series. Were these done indoors? These are all in the studio now. <laughs> it's, it's very different. Um, it's very challenging to be outside, and so that's also why I was constantly looking at the weather. <laughs> so it really brought my attention to, you know, the light would change constantly, the wind, the storms. So after all of those years of painting outdoors, most of my attention ended up being on the weather. Um, just practical reasons, and then, um, so it's different. But I do enjoy painting outside occasionally still, as the, you know, part of something separate. Um, so this is a installation, this is just a studio photograph with some of the first paintings from the Ross and Ray series, and um, then around a year into working on the Ross and Ray series, and I'm still formulating all the ideas for it, I watched a program on PBS, which I highly recommend, um, which completely sparked my interest and also provided the scientific basis for the thinking behind the series. And here are just some images from that program. So I had learned from that program that hundreds of satellites are currently orbiting the Earth, gathering data on invisible forces of nature that constantly impact us, such as weather patterns, currents, and solar flares. After seeing this program, I started referring to NASA websites and um, the scientific imagery coming from the satellites. This is an image from a solar flare from, taken from the program. I also continue to 
get inspiration from other artists, especially um, who managed to capture something magical and mystical about the sky and stars, which is Van Gogh, Turner, which is an amazing series of pretty abstract paintings um, all about the sky. And Birchfield is a favorite. Uh, during this stage of the Rocks and Race series, series, I'm still working on, with oil paint and boards. Um, and here should be a video. Let's see if it runs. There we go. Just a quick little. Is it on? No. Well, maybe we can come back to that.
Um, so the work I did in the Rocks and Rings series led up from 2012 to 2015. The first half of the Rocks and Rings series led up to a solo show at Susan Ely Fine Art in Manhattan. Um, so right after that exhibit, I got back in the studio and started working on my largest painting to date. Um, and I also made another shift in my materials. And I become fascinated by drips, um, especially planned drips. And here are two artists that I looked at for um, their wonderful use of drips. And I also became very interested in graffiti and street art. Um, and I started using fluid graffiti acrylics in my paintings. And this photo, I'm preparing paper with a very textured surface, um, the same process that was used for the painting here in the biennial show. And that brings me to 2016, when Rocks and Race 13 was painted, the painting in this show. Um, I started incorporating the use of planned and calculated paint drips. Um, this is another video clip, but we can play that at the end if we have some time. Um, there's another detail shot. This detail image, you can see the use of the raw linen shown through, and you can see fluid um, planned drips, some metallic silver paints, and translucent layering. And this is a photo of me working in the studio in 2016, starting out painting with the graffiti paints on raw linen. Um, and even though the paintings look like they may be very spontaneous and expressive, they're actually very calculated. Um, it's a very meditative process that was involved, and much of, there was a lot of time spent figuring out what the next move was. Um, because every brush stroke is allowed to show, it was a slow and very intentional process. Uh, in order to facilitate some of the decisions with the direction of the paintings, I used an app on my iPad and I would experiment with different options. And this animation shows um, part of the process of experimenting on the iPad. Um, but we will look at videos later. <laughs> This is another painting that I had worked on on the iPad in order to make decisions. And another um, video of the iPad memory. Um, these last paintings are the latest in the Rocks and Rays series from 2017 and 18.
you've been wonderful, and I'm just very happy to have had this opportunity to share my process with you. So thank you very much.